Pliny the Younger, Book 3, Letter 1 To Calvicius I cannot recollect that I have ever spent my time more agreeably than lately with Spurina. Insomuch that if I live to grow old, there is no man whom I should think at that period of life more worthy of my imitation. Nothing can be more remarkably distinguished than his way of living. And, as I take delight in observing the regular course of the planets, I have the same sort of pleasure in considering the decent order in which men pass their days, especially men in years. In young men, perhaps some irregularity and disorder may not be unbecoming. But in the downhill of life, all things should be carried on smoothly and methodically. The time of industry is then past, and the allurements of ambition are become shameful. Spurina keeps to this rule most religiously. In the greatest trifles, trifles if they were not his daily employment, he moves round in one unvaried rotation and regularity. In a morning, he remains some time ruminating in his bed. He calls for his clothes about eight o'clock and takes a walk generally of three miles not only for the exercise of his body, but of his mind. If his friends are with him, they converse and dispute upon various useful and polite subjects. If he is alone, a book is read to him. which is sometimes the case, even when his friends are present, provided they show no aversion to it. As soon as he comes in, he sits down, and then again some book is taken up, or some conversation preferable to a book is pursued. after which he goes out in his chariot and takes with him his wife, a woman of singular merit, or else one of his friends. And of late I was the person. It is then you enjoy the sweets of his private conversation, It is then he opens to you the stores of antiquity. What actions, what men do you hear of? What precepts do you then imbibe? But whilst you learn, so excellently tempered is his modesty, he does not seem to dictate. After an excursion in this manner of about seven miles, he walks again a mile, 
and then reposes himself? Or goes up to his chamber to write? For his writings, both in Greek and Latin, are masterly, especially his lyrics. His poetry is so wonderfully sweet, so easy, and at the same time so gay, that the only additional graces it can receive are from the unsullied character of the author. When they bring him word that the hour of bathing is come, which in winter is at three o'clock in the afternoon, and in summer at two, if there is no wind, he walks quite undressed in the sun, and then plays at tennis violently, and for a long time together. This is a kind of exercise which he uses as a weapon against the attacks of old age. After bathing, he goes to bed, choosing not to eat the moment he comes out of the bath. In the meanwhile, lying down, something amusing and of no consequence is read to him. And his friends, during all this interval, are at liberty to divert themselves, either in the same manner or in any other they choose. When supper is served, you find it no less neat than frugal, and the whole service is in pure antique silver. He has likewise a set of Corinthian plate, which he sometimes uses, but seems rather pleased with it than proud of it. We are often entertained at supper with a comedy. That even pleasures may be seasoned with study. The supper generally breaks in upon the night, even in summer. And yet a meal lengthened out by so much politeness can never appear tedious. By these means, he has his hearing and eyesight entire, and his body is perfectly active and vigorous, although he is turned of seventy-seven. The only mark of age he discovers is prudence. My wishes and my thoughts lead me to look forward to this kind of life, which I am determined to enter upon with the utmost eagerness as soon as I am so far advanced in years that I can plead a sufficient excuse for my retreat. In the meanwhile, I am engaged in multiplicity of business, in which, however, I comfort myself with the example of Spurina. For he also, as long as he thought he was in honour obliged, applied himself to the service of the state. 
He has passed through the several magistracies. He has governed provinces. And he has earned, by his toils, the tranquility which he now possesses. I set myself, therefore, the same course and the same boundaries. And I declare this to you under my hand, that, if I should go beyond the limits I have prescribed, you may have full commission to call me back to be judged by my own letter, and command me to retire whenever you think I shall not run the hazard of being reproached for my idleness. Farewell.